They say everything old is new again, even in art. Spanish modernist sculptor Eduardo Chiyida's work is widely collected in Europe, but in the U.S., his work is getting its first solo exhibit Friday night in New York, the first solo exhibit in two decades. WSJ's Kelly Crow covers the art market for Arena and joins us now on Lunch Break. Hi, Kelly. So Hello. why now for Chiyida? So consider this your unofficial sort of stock tip of the day. But honestly, collectors are combing through art history and dealers as well, looking for anyone who played a significant role at any point in the last century and yet whose auction prices are not soaring along the lines of Picasso and the rest. And somehow in the scrum, this Spanish modernist sculptor just got, got a little bit overlooked. And so this London dealer, Pilar Ordovis, who has done wonders for the markets of Lucien Freud and Francis Bacon, and over the years, she's taken up the charge, rented out this sort of 10,000 square foot space in Manhattan and has shipped over all of his sculptures. It took more than a month by boat to get them here because some of them weigh, you know, 21 tons. And this amounts to like a huge introduction. Like, look, Art World, if you haven't been paying top dollar for this guy, you better get in now or, or you're going to regret it. So Amazing. this is an interesting gambit. Yeah. Amazing. Now, his work is certainly unique. Not only was he famous for using iron, steel, and granite in his work, but some of his sculptures, as you said, weigh as much as 21 tons. How would you characterize his work as an artist? Well, what's great about him is that he was working at the time of Calder and uh, younger than Miro, but you can imagine this sort of World War II era young man trying to figure out how to take sculpture into new forms. Um, but unlike Giacometti, he didn't want to do sort of smudgy thumbprint portraits of people. He really wanted to do something angular and geometric with these almost sort of playful alien-like forms. So you see these, I love what I call them like the robot claws, like he has these sort of C-shaped prong-like shapes. Um, he's sort of doing these scoops like a giant melon baller, you know, out of iron, which is meant to um, be both a nod to the Basque region where he grew up, where there's a lot of mining. There's sort of a heavy iron culture, if you will. So he was familiar with forges. He grew up with guys who knew how to work with this material. And yet he wanted to make it seem light and playful as though it were literally combing through the wind. Um, and I think that juxtaposition is great, on top of which he always worked by himself. No additions no things done in casts of 10 or 12, you know, like you see these young guys today. Every piece is unique, which I think the market, you know, will pay attention to that rarity. Right. I mean, he has an interesting story. As you said, he was always known sort of as a reclusive artist. So will his story be part of the sales pitch? I think absolutely. I mean, the auction houses have done wonders over the years, sort of creating the theater around an artist's life. And you can't look from, you know, Jackson Pollock to Warhol without saying that the stories of their lives and how they moved through the art world make a huge difference in the, the bottom dollar prices that collectors pay. So will Cheetah's story pay off? That's that's the gamble that uh, that Pilar Ordovas is making now. It'll be interesting to see how she does. It'll certainly be exciting to just check out the pop out up store, even if if you aren't buying just to see his work. Yeah, it's fun. I mean, if you know, we haven't seen these pieces there. They come directly from the artist's estate. He died in 20, uh, 2002 and didn't really have a major dealer shopping his work since then. So it's just honestly nice to see art we haven't seen in every auction catalog already this season. Absolutely. So, uh, Thank you so much, Kelly Crow, for that. Great.